All right, so we're going to get started. Um, again, I'd like to welcome all of you to our, our sociology uh, Bachelor of Arts uh, advising session for transfer students here at UC Irvine under the School of Social Sciences. So welcome and congratulations on making use of your choice. Um, my name is Kurt Hessinger, and I'm one of the academic advisors here with the School of Social Sciences. And so we're going to actually have a presentation for you regarding everything you know about your major in sociology and the School of Social Sciences, graduation requirements. So at the end of our session, um, we are going to have a Q&A session. So make sure that you stay throughout the duration. So if you have some questions, you'll be able to ask those questions. And our academic advisors will also be answering those as well uh, at the end of our session. So if you can hold your questions to the end, that'd be great. But we're going to get started. All right, so again, like I said, welcome. Um, we're gonna be hopefully in the right spot for sociology for all of the new transfer students coming in. Welcome again. All right, so some of the things we're gonna be uh, going over in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Carissa Sorensen regarding, she's gonna talk a little bit more about the opportunities available to you with our Social Sciences Academic Resource Center. So we're gonna start with that. And then we're gonna go into some graduation requirements because I know everyone wants to know how to get from point A to point B in order to graduate. Then we're going to talk a little bit more about school social science requirements and how that factors into your major. Uh, we'll go a little bit through the sociology department and their opportunities that they provide. And then major requirements, things like minors and electives and how that factors in. Uh, changing your major possibly or double majoring as an option. Um, a little bit about our office as undergraduate student affairs, right? And then some resources that are going to be helpful for you. And then we'll talk about some upcoming deadlines and then we'll have our live Q&A session as I mentioned earlier. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Carissa, and she's going to talk a little bit more about uh, the SARC. So it's all yours, Carissa. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kurt. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carissa Sorensen, and I'm the director of the Social Sciences Academic Resource Center, also known as SARC. I'm excited to be here with you virtually to just share a little bit more about our center and how we can provide you the resources um, to set you up for long-term success um, after graduating from UCI. Um, so just a little bit about SARC. Um, we're committed to support your pursuit of your past baccalaureate goals, which just means your goals after UCI, um, whether that's graduate school or full-time employment or research, we kind of have it all. Um, and we're actually very unique to the School of Social Sciences. There's not really any other school that has a center like ours. Um, but for example, our team can help guide you through the graduate school application process. So this means your personal statement or statement of purpose, um, connecting you to scholarships here in the School of Social Sciences or just UCI scholarships in general, internships, career positions, faculty mentored research opportunities. Um, perhaps you're interested in getting involved with other campus leadership or service opportunities as well. Um, we strongly encourage you to utilize um, and take advantage of our one-on-one -on -one consultations. You can actually meet with um, myself, um, my colleague Patrick, who's our program coordinator. We also have graduate student advisors. So these are current PhD students in the School of Social Sciences that are available to help you with the graduate school process. We also have um, peer consultants, which are just peers, students just like you, um, could also provide a wealth of information and knowledge as well. Um, but check us out, get your resume, cover letter reviewed, critiqued, and also hopefully once we're in person, eventually you'll be able to utilize our space that we have on campus where you can utilize um, our space to specifically study or print um, or just utilize our computers as well. But for now, you can contact us virtually. Um, we are available this summer, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and our contact information is on this flyer right here. So feel free to shoot us an email. Um, and we also encourage you to follow us on social media as well. Um, we're available at UC Irvine Sark on Instagram and Facebook, and you'll find lots of really great resources on there too. Um, but thank you so much for having me and I'll go ahead and pass it to Kurt. All right, thank you, Carissa. Um, we're always very excited to talk about our Social Sciences Academic Resource Center because we are one of the few schools that has this type of resource for our students. So definitely something to take advantage of. Chris and Patrick and uh, the students that they have there do amazing jobs uh, regarding that. So definitely take advantage. Okay, so we're gonna be moving on. 
All right, so graduation requirements. So obviously there are certain things that have to be done in order for you to be able to get a degree from UCI. And some of those things are related to your major and some of them are related to you know, units and things of that nature that you would need to do as well. So the first thing you need to know is that anything related to math courses that are required in the School of Social Sciences, which you're gonna be talking about a little bit later, and all majors for your, for your uh, in sociology have to be taken for a letter grade option. So that's the first thing you need to realize is that make sure you're taking all those courses for letter grade. Now, the next thing is all students have to have a minimum of 180 quarter units in order to graduate. And this is the same for all majors across the campus. So when it doesn't matter if you're sociology, psychology, history, everyone has to have at least 180 quarter units in order to graduate. So what that means is, let's say you're completing your sociology major and maybe you've done all the major requirements, but you find that you're a little bit short of the 180 quarter units. What that means is you, you may need to take additional units um, to reach the 180 unit mark, right? And so that could be something through a minor, through a double major, or some elective units that we'll be talking about as well. All right, and then next also, there is a, a max transfer limit of 105 quarter units for transfer students. This does not include an advanced placement or IB exam credit if you have those as well. But typically, the 105 quarter units means that if you're coming from a semester school, 70 semester units equates to 105 quarter units. So if you want to put that in perspective a little bit, that kind of gives you an idea of the maximum you, you can transfer in for units. Um, that doesn't mean you can't take more courses if necessary at a community college or a school, but you wouldn't get any extra units for them at that point. So to keep that in mind if you you feel that you need to take more classes outside of UCI. All right, and then lastly, every student has to have a minimum 2.0 overall and GPA and within their major. I know all of you have aspirations of getting higher GPA than that, but at least that's good to know that the minimum that you at least have to have is a 2.0. All right, so the next few slides are gonna deal with four uh, distinct areas. The first one is UC requirements. And when we say UC requirements, that refers to the same requirements for all UC campuses. So that's something that everyone has to meet. And then we have UC Irvine general education requirements that we're going to go through. And then we have School of Social Science requirements that all students and all of our majors in social sciences have to meet. And then we're also going to be talking about major specific courses within your major of sociology. All right, so the first UC requirement that you see up there is called UC entry level writing. And we do find that all of our, most of our transfer students, if not all, do have this requirement satisfied because usually if you've completed one English composition course, that usually or typically meets this requirement. So many of you, if not all, will have this met already. Now, the next requirement, some of you may have some of it or all of it or none of it, right? So this is the American History and Institutions requirement. And so this is a UC requirement. So every student has to have at least a course in American history and a course in American government, all right? Now, you may have completed both of those courses from your previous college? If so, if, it, and if UCI admissions certifies it on your transcript, then you may have already satisfied this, all right? But we, don't, we won't know that officially until fall quarter begins because your transcripts are still being evaluated right now, okay? Now, if you know you need to complete it, there are ways to complete that here at UCI. Uh, one, of, one option is to complete a year-long sequence of US history, which is history 40 A, B, and C, with a grade of C or better at UCI. Or you can complete one U.S. history course and one U.S. government course with a grade of C or better as well to complete this requirement. So, like I said, some of you may have it all satisfied. Some of you may need one of the two or you may need all of them. So we'll be able to know more about this once the fall quarter begins. Right. And another thing to consider is that if you do have a high school transcript that can verify completion of American history institutions as well, that may be something you might want to send to UCI admissions as well so they can confirm that as well. So something to note, you know, when you're your official transcripts. All right, so at UCI, we do have a series of eight general education categories that students have to meet, right? The first one is writing. and We do have three courses total for the writing area. Uh, we have science and technology, which is again, three courses in science and technology, such as chemistry, physics, bio sci, or system science as examples. Then we have category three, which is social and behavioral sciences, and that's three courses as well. However, as School of Social Sciences majors, you'll have this uh, category automatically satisfied just by being a major in sociology. So as long as you stay with us here in the School of Social Sciences and complete your degree, you'll have this satisfied automatically. And then category four is arts and humanities, and that's again, three courses. And those courses can be courses in areas like African-American studies, philosophy, history, art history, 
uh, film and media studies. And so those are some examples of courses there. And then we have category five, which is quantitative literacy and formal reasoning, which in the School of Social Sciences will be covered by the math requirement that we'll be talking about a little bit later. All right? And then category six, language other than English. Uh, at UCI, we do require our students to go through the 1C level uh, to complete that requirement. So depending on if you satisfy that either through high school or your previous college, we'll have to check on that for you. And then category seven, Multicultural studies is one course in this area. And those are like race and ethnic studies courses that could also be Asian American studies, African American studies as examples as well. That would be one course. And then category eight is international global issues. And that's one course as well. And that typically focuses on a course outside of the US like um, history of China or Canadian politics, things like that. That would be considered international global issues. All right. Now for many of you, I know a lot of you are coming from California community colleges. So you probably are maybe familiar with UCI Getty, all right? So if you fill that out on your form uh, for registration for the summer and you've indicated that, what that means is if you're certified for UCI Getty, we'll talk about that in a second, that you may not have to do many of these categories. Most of them may be satisfied, all right? Uh, the same thing is with UC Reciprocity. Uh, if you're coming from another UC campus, if you're transferring from another campus like Riverside or Santa Cruz or UCLA, then if we can get a letter from your UC campus saying you've completed their general education requirements, then you may have most of these categories satisfied as well. All right, so a little bit more in depth about IGETC and UC reciprocity. So keep in mind that IGETC certification is a community college certification. So it's not something that the UC kind of submits as a certification, it comes directly from your home community college. So if you went to a California community college, and your community college is going to send that to Getsy. It's very important that you actually ask your community college to include that with your transcript. Okay, so it's not an automatic thing that's done for every student just because you requested a transcript. Um, what it does is usually it's either on the transcript somewhere it says UC I Getsy certified, or it could be in a separate sheet that's attached to the transcript that may be a certificate of completion for it as well. Okay. Um, but like I said, it isn't automatic. So it is something you're probably going to have to specifically ask for your community college to certify. Uh, it may be something on the electronic request, it might be a checkbox or something like that. But it is something you definitely want to make sure that you have sent to UCI admissions because that's how we're going to know if you've completed UCI Getsy. All right. So that's definitely important to know. All right. Now, UC reciprocity is typically a letter that you receive from your home campus, uh, your UC campus, stating that you've done the uh, certification as well for UC reciprocity it's from their GE. So that's something you would request from your UC campus if you're doing UC reciprocity. And then if you're doing the full partial UCI gets the four letter of reciprocity, make sure you definitely have the official copy sent electronically to UCI admissions prior to the start of fall quarter. That's really the way that we only way we can know if you've actually been certified for that. So we can give you full credit for that. All right. And then the last thing to know is that all transfer students Regardless of I get to your reciprocity, do you have to complete an upper division writing course to fulfill the final GE requirement? And that's for all majors across the campus. So keep that in mind is when you're taking courses uh, that are marked with a W and we'll, you know, as you go through it, you'll see those courses marked with W's. Those are classified as upper division writing classes and that is required for all students. All right, so School of Social Science requirements. So there are two specific requirements that all of our school social science majors have to complete, which is a mathematics requirement, which is a one year, uh, full one year requirement in math, and then one computer technology requirement course. All right, so before we get started, it's in the, in the past years, we've seen many students come in with at least a semester of, of stats uh, or a quarter of stats, depending on where you're coming from. That's very common. So we do see a lot of students come in with just the stats requirement with one course, right? Now that meets, part of the requirement, but you still need to take additional courses if that's the only type of math you've taken at your previous community college. So the options that you have, right, are option one, which would be taking a year long sequence in our probability and stats sequence, which can be completed with social science 10 A, B, and C, or sociology 10 A, B, and C, right? So you take that like a fall, winter, spring, it's a year long sequence. And even if you have done one semester of stats, you would still need to do that whole sequence because it is taught a little bit differently and it's a little bit more in depth in that area, okay? Now, the other option you have is the calculus with stats, which is math 2A and 2B is calculus here at UCI. 
And then stats seven is a stats course here at UCI. So let's say you did do a semester of stats from your previous college, okay? If that's happened, then that means you have credit for stats seven, but then you would need to decide, okay, do I wanna take calculus, math 2A and 2B to complete the math requirement, or do I wanna go up and take the 10 A, B, and C uh, probability and statistics sequence? So you'd have a choice on those two, right? Now, if you've done a transferable semester of calculus and a transferable semester of stats, then you might already have the math requirement completed, but that'll be evaluated when you submit your transcripts for advising for the summer, and we'll, you'll be able to know where you stand with that later in the summer, okay? So hopefully that was clear on that math part. Um, also, make sure all your math courses are taken for a letter grade, right? And then computer technology requirement, that is the second requirement for school of social sciences, right? And that's a one course uh, commitment. And most of our students will take social science 3A, which is our version of computer technology here in social sciences. There is an ICS 31 course, which is taught by the uh, computer science school on campus. It is a more challenging course to get into. It's, it's taken by our computer science majors, but that's also an option if you want to. But many of you will probably decide for the social science 3A class because it is more readily available uh, every quarter. All right. And then you can take this course for either a pass, no pass, or for a letter grade as well. All right, and then sociology. So all of you coming in as sociology majors have already probably taken at least a course in sociology. So you kind of have a little bit of idea of what, what the uh, field is about. But at UCI, our faculty members are interested in studying like patterns of relationships among people, how behavior is shaped by these patterns, and cooperation and social structures and change are included. Um, so a lot of our faculty members you'll see will be teaching courses that, that cover those areas. And on the left side, you'll see some sample courses that you might be taking uh, during the next uh, couple of years. So society and religion, race and ethnicity, medical sociology, sociology of education, sociology of mental health are all some of the courses that you're gonna be seeing probably in the schedule of classes later when you're trying to look for classes throughout the next couple of years. So you'll see some of those type of courses. We also have in sociology, there's an honors program. So if you feel that you wanna be more in depth engaged with research opportunities and maybe write your own thesis, which is Kind of a, a year-long research project that you come up with on your own with a faculty mentor there is that available as well and uh, typically you would do that maybe in the, the second year that you start but that is available um, we also have certificate programs in the department of sociology uh, which are in addition to what you're doing there some of them can cross over with their major requirements but you'll see programs in diversity international sociology human services business economy and society so those are options too that are provided by the department directly all right, and then you can see we have a sociology club, and then we also have an honor society as well in the Department of Sociology. All right, so on the left-hand side, you're gonna see kind of what's uh, the, I guess the scaled down version of a degree check that you're gonna be getting later this summer, right? So your basically outlines all the courses in the, first, in the middle column and the third column that are required to receive uh, the sociology degree, right? So as you can see in the top right up here, you have introduction to sociology, right? And then you'll have either sociology two or three, which is right here. And then you'll have a methods and theory course. So one in each area, right? So sociology 110 is the methods course, 120 is the uh, theory course, which you'll see that right here and right here on the degree check. And then re one research design course, which is sociology 180A, and that's in number 12 right here on the degree check sheet. And then there will be seven additional sociology courses required. A maximum of three courses can be lower division. So when we say lower division, we mean any course numbered from one to 89, right? And then upper division courses are numbered 100 through 189. So just to put that in perspective as well, all right? And then you have three additional school social science courses that you'll see at the top up here as well, okay? So what this means is many of you are gonna have courses that have been transferred over into your major in sociology. So right now this is blank, but when your transcripts are being evaluated, we're gonna start checking off courses that you have completed from your previous uh, college. And so you're gonna see what, we, what you get credit for in advance during the summer. So you'll be able to see that later this summer when we send you your evaluation. It just kind of gives you an outline of what the major requirements are. Okay, so minors and electives. So, you might, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to find that you might need additional units to reach that 180 quarter unit mark that we talked about earlier. So if that's the case, you have a couple of options, right? 
One is, okay, maybe you might want to engage in a minor, which is kind of, I like to call it like an appetizer of the major. It gives you a little introductory overview of what that field is about. Um, it could be something related to sociology, or it could be something completely different, right? It could be something in history. Maybe you want to do a history minor because you love history courses. And then you might take a, a set of seven or more classes in those areas, and then you could achieve a minor in that area, right? Uh, the minors are not mandatory, so it's not something you have to do. But if, it's, if there's a personal kind of field that you'd like to get a little bit more background in, that may make your decision a little bit easier. Um, also, to add a minor, you would just ask, you know, probably talk to us sometime during the academic year, and then we can add that uh, to your, so you can start keeping track of the courses for that as well. Okay. Now, you don't have to do a minor at all, as I indicated, but you also have the opportunity to maybe take elective units as well, right? And so that second um, bullet point right there really talks more about, okay, elective units are anything extra that you have after you've done all of your major requirements and school requirements, right? So if you need extra units, maybe I'm not interested in doing a minor, maybe I want to take some courses in various areas. So those would be, you know, considered elective units because you're taking because you need them for units but they don't necessarily have to be within your major if you satisfy all those requirements. Okay, so changing your major or double major, right? So transfer students are allowed, may be allowed to change majors depending on the major or even add a double uh, once they start at UCI in the fall quarter, as long as you can meet the requirements necessary to change into the major or even complete the double major requirements, okay? So all requirements that either if you're gonna change your major, if you're planning on doing that, or if you're gonna add a double major, you require a completion of a certain amount of courses. So you might be a certain, could be three courses, could be five courses, it depends. Uh, there also will be a specific GPA requirement that you need to achieve as well before you can make that change or double major. Um, and it might be, there might be also be a maximum unit limits as well, okay? So what we mean by that is that all transfer students are allowed nine full quarters to complete their degree requirements at UCI, which is basically three full years if you're coming in as a transfer student. So depending on where, when you start making those, meeting those requirements for changing majors or doing a double major, that's gonna determine if you have the time enough to complete that double major or change your major. So definitely something to look at right away if you're considering either changing your major or double majoring in the future, okay? And then also the last part there, if you wanna do all of the change of major requirements or all the double major requirements, that link at the bottom, changeofmajor.uci.edu, is a link you can go to, and then you'll be able to see all of the major, all of the requirements to get into a certain major at UCI, and that'll help you kind of outline as far as how many courses are required and what the GPA requirements are as well. So our student affairs office, as you can see from the from the photo right there, we are a fun bunch, right? And we do like to think so because we're in social sciences and we like to have fun and we like to be friendly too because you're gonna be coming to us for a lot of advising for the next two or three years. So that's our office, that's our full-time advisors as you see right there, all right? Um, our location, and uh, we're happy to have you in the fall because we're gonna have you having students come back on campus this fall. That's our general location on campus. So we're in the Social and Behavioral Sciences Gateway Building, which is called SBSG. So when you look for us on the campus map, you'll see that. And then you'll see our general email address right there, which is socsci at uci.edu. And then we also have our website there for more information. So in our office, you can see all of us right there with our nice photos, but we have eight full-time academic advisors here in the School of Social Sciences. And the great thing is we're all alumni, right? So yeah, when you see the zot, 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 that's us, right? So all of us know this campus backwards and forwards, you know, from different areas. Some of us were social sciences majors, some of us were humanities majors. So you, you have the luxury of having eight full-time advisors who know this campus really well, which is really nice, right? But even better than that, right, we have eight to 12 peer academic advisors who are trained by one of our excellent academic advisors, Estella, and they're actually even better than we are, we think, because they represent you as students, right? Because they, they come from the perspective of, here's what I'm doing right now, here's how I'm planning my schedules out, here's what I'm doing on campus. So they represent what life is like currently right now in the classroom. And that's an important fact, uh, thing that we love about our peer academic advisors. They come from various majors in social sciences, from various backgrounds, and they can share a lot of experiences that are currently happening right now. So you're going to have that luxury of having eight full-time advisors and our peer academic advisors as well, All right? And then you can see our other services that we can help you out as well. But definitely use this as a point of reference. Whenever you have questions, you'll have access to our office.
All right, so communicating with our office, okay? How are we gonna do that? So for the summer, okay, you definitely wanna communicate with us via the transfer admit at socsci.uci.eu email. Many of you have already either used that email address or received emails from that email address. Please make sure for the entirety of the summer that you continue to use that email address because that's our main point of uh, communication with you for the summer. And keep in mind that our fall quarter doesn't start until the end of September. So you'll be using this email address, you know, from between now and like, you know, through September in order to communicate with our office. When you do send an email during the summer uh, with the transfer admit, make sure you give us your UCI, you use your UCI email address, right? Because it's activated. So please make sure you use that. Uh, make sure you include your full name and your UCID number in the email. And at least give us about two business days to respond because we do have a lot of new students coming in close in the 900 range of new transfer students. So Give us at least a couple of days to respond back to your request, but you'll definitely get a response, I promise. Okay. And then in the fall quarter, so once that starts at the end of September, then you'll have the option of emailing either an advisor in our office, and we do highlight and underline one advisor. Uh, we want to make sure that if you have a question, there's no need to email all eight of us at one time. You can also you can pick one of us and email that way. You'll get a better response time that way as well. Or you can send a general email address to our socsci at uci.edu account as well, and you'll get an advisor response that way uh, for your question. Phone, we are gonna have phone hours, which will be posted on our website during the beginning with the fall quarter. So when you visit our website, you go there and you can see on our advising webpage, you'll see our, our phone hours, and then you can call in and uh, someone will be, uh, will be at the phones to help you out as well. If you happen to call outside of our posted phone hours, just leave a voicemail with your full name and UCID number, and we'll return your call the next time you're available. So if you leave a number, call back, we'll definitely get back to you if, uh, if we're not there at the phones at that time. But definitely leave a voicemail there, all right? We also have live chat, which is really nice. So if you have a really quick question that one of the advisors uh, can help out with, we definitely recommend using our live chat once, this, once the quarter begins. Um, these are more for quick questions, so we don't do in-depth advising during the live chat. So we don't do schedule planning and things like that because it is for quick chat questions, but that is an option if you if you need it between all quarter. And then we're also gonna have Zoom appointments available with our advisors as well. And that's gonna start week two of each quarter and then go through the week 10 of each quarter. So starting week two of each quarter, we start our Zoom appointments for that particular quarter, right? And that's also gonna be available on our request form on our website that we have as well. All right, so, but for the summer between now and September, through September, please use your transfer admin email for any questions you have. All right, so some of the resources that we have uh, around campus, obviously there's a lot more resources than what you see here, but this represents a really good representation of some of the offices and staff that you can go to for assistance outside of our office. Um, obviously, financial aid is gonna be important. We have our Learning and Academic Resource Center, we have our UCI Dream Center. We have the LGBTQ Resource Center as well. Um, so each of these offices provide a great, great services for our students. And we have amazing staff at each one of these offices. And so we highly recommend using their services because they are available to you either through uh, remote or in person once the quarter begins. So please definitely take advantage of all the great resources that we have here at UCI. All right, so what does come now? All right, so you definitely, one of the most important things is register for transfer advising, all right? So you've received emails and by June 18th at 5 p.m., you wanna make sure that you have at least registered for transfer advising through the form that we have, because um, that's gonna activate the next part of it, which is uh, completing your Canvas module. So everyone's gonna get a Canvas module once you've registered for transfer advising. And those Canvas modules are gonna be more information about your major, uh, kind of things you need to know about enrolling in classes and how to do that. Um, so that's going to be required as well, and that has to be done by June 24th, right? And so basically, uh, if you complete your Canvas modules by June 24th, you will have your registration holds lifted between June 28th and July 8th, so then you can enroll into fall, fall classes, right? And so those, that's an important deadline, right? Because you want to be able to enroll in classes as soon as possible when you're able to. And so once we send you the email, an advisor is going to send you a specific email regarding courses that we recommend for you to take. And we're going to put information about recommended courses. We're going to include a degree check within that email as well from a specific advisor in our office. So when you get that email, very important for when you're holding start enrolling classes. So you're able to get the classes that you need for fall quarter because 
you don't want to miss out on really good classes that you might want to take because they could potentially fill up if you wait too long to enroll. All right, so those are two important dates. Register by June 18th at 5 p.m. Complete your Canvas modules by June 24th. And then some Canvas deadlines by July 1st, make sure you send all of your official transcripts to UCI admissions by July 1st to avoid any holds on your record, okay, very important. And then the final deadline there is the fall quarter fee payment deadline, which is September 15th at 4 p.m. So make sure you pay your fees before that date uh, because you don't wanna get dropped from courses because what happens is if you don't pay your fees by that date, then you get dropped from all those courses that you enrolled into and then they may not be available later. So very important to get those fees paid as well, okay? All right, so that does it for kind of the, the presentation part of our, of our uh, webinar today. So what we are gonna have right now is we're gonna have a live Q&A session with our academic advisors. So in the Q&A box, uh, Q&A chat box that you have right there, put your questions in there. And then what we're gonna have now is our advisors are gonna help out with answering some of the questions that you may have uh, about anything related to your major. Um, we do ask that um, you keep your questions to only once at a time. Don't post the same question twice. That'll help us out in answering those questions. Make sure there are also general questions as well, because we can't really get too specific regarding your personal background because it is confidential information. So keep them general and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions for you. So that being said, you know, it looks like we have some questions in there already. So we'll go ahead and try to get to them as quickly as we can. Okay, um, so hi everyone. My name is Sarah and I'm one of the academic advisors um, and I will be moderating the Q&A. So I'm going to read out your questions as we answer them. Um, so, all right, I guess um, we have a couple questions about um, like the process of transfer advising. So I'm just going to answer those really quickly. Um, so the first question is from Corey and she's asking, will we be able to enroll in classes today? Um, so no. Um, we're not quite at that point of having transfer students enroll in classes. So the way the process works um, is that once you've submitted the transfer advising registration form, um, we will then give you access to your Canvas course modules. Um, and once you complete your Canvas modules, um, then you kind of just hang tight for a little bit. Um, and we are going to start emailing everyone that has completed their Canvas modules by the posted deadline um, starting June 28th. So the kind of two week period between June 28th and July 8th is when um, you're going to receive an email from one of our advisors that has a degree check sheet for your sociology major, um, as well as some personalized course recommendations um, based on the coursework that you've already completed at community college. Um, and at that point, we will lift your enrollment hold and you'll be able to enroll in classes. Um, so that's kind of the process. That's why Kurt said, you know, if you haven't submitted the transfer advising form yet, um, please do so. If anybody has not received it or can't find it, it should have been sent to the email address that you used on your UC application. But if for whatever reason you can't find um, that email that was sent from us, um, please go ahead and send an email to the transfer admin email address. Um, it's transferadmit at socci.uci.edu. Um, and we'll go ahead and resend that to you. Um, it's important that you fill that out as soon as possible and upload your unofficial transcripts because we need to actually have our advisors evaluate your transcripts so we know what classes you've already completed and what you still need to take for your major here at UCI. Um, so that kind of actually leads into the next question, which is when will our community college transcripts be evaluated? Um, we are working on that. So we have an incoming transfer class of about 950 students in social sciences. And so we actually have to go through all of your transcripts um, and check to see what you've done by hand. So it's quite a process and it takes some time. And that's why we're not having students enroll or lifting holds until um, later this month and early in July. Um, let me see if there are any other... Okay, I think that's everything as far as the process of transfer advising, although if anybody has um, any other questions about that, let us know. Um, so now we will answer a question from Andrew, who is asking, um, I plan to take a course during summer session two. Do the deadlines change? Oh, I guess this kind of still goes with transfer advising. <laughs> um, so if you take a course through summer session two or transfer edge, um, no, you still need to submit all of your documents by our posted deadlines uh, as far as transfer registration. 
is concerned, but you can uh, you can let us know what you're taking during summer session and um, we'll factor that in to the course recommendations that we give you for fall. Um, we can also generally see when you're enrolled in summer classes um, in your study list. So um, that would be something that we would just go ahead and um, take a look at and factor in before we send you the course recommendations. Okay, next question is from Sarah. She's asking, how do we take summer classes and when? I'll let someone else answer. <laughs> Oh, I'll go. Hi, I'm Estelle Magana. <laughs> I'm one of the other academic advisors, and I do tend to go on tangents, so sorry. Um, but I was a sociology major when I was a UCI student many, many years ago. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Um, let me actually answer your question. So how do we take summer classes? So there is actually a program called Transfer Edge, um, which is an opportunity in the second summer session um, to be able to do um, kind of participate in a program with the student success initiatives as where you take a class as well as also taking like an academic class for your major. Um, so you could uh, apply for that program and enroll in summer classes through that. You can also actually just enroll in classes if you don't wanna be a part of the Transfer Edge program. Um, you can also just enroll in summer classes. You can do it now, um, but we usually recommend waiting until you get that information from us with the evaluation of your work, um, just so that you're not repeating classes that you've already taken. Um, that tends to happen a lot. Um, unfortunately, like classes kind of sound the same and you're like, wait, this is something I like. Um, and then you might end up taking a class you've already taken. Um, if anything, anything upper division, meaning numbered 100 through 199 is an option for you um, if you don't want to wait in terms of um, finding a summer class, but feel free to email us um, if you do have any questions or specific classes that you might want to take. Um, summer enrollment is all done on the summer website, which is summer.uci.edu. So it's separate from the um, WebRed system that you'll learn about um, in your Canvas modules. But yeah, so um, feel free to contact us um, about what classes you take. I think sociology has a good amount of courses um, for the summer. So there are good options of upper division classes that you could consider taking. Um, Estella, an another student was asking what the benefits of Transfer Edge is versus just taking like random summer classes. Um, I think definitely the benefit is the additional class. I think it's like one or two units, um, but it is also helping kind of with the transition to UCI. So making the most of your undergraduate career. Um, so a lot of transfer students feel like you're behind in some way, even though you're ahead. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of making sure that you're aware of the different resources, aware of what you should be doing each quarter, um, not just academically, but just um, overall um, to enhance the rest of your experience at UCI. So definitely a benefit. Um, I hear from a lot of students that do transfer edge that they enjoy it. Um, and it also puts you kind of connected with other transfer students. And especially in this remote environment we have currently, um, that's kind of nice to know someone that you might be in classes with for fall. So there's a benefit, yeah. Okay, uh, we have another couple more administrative type questions. Um, so Monica is asking if her community college classes uh, don't end until June 17th, does she have to does she have time to send her official transcript um, or like before the July 1st deadline, I'm assuming? Um, is it just send them as soon as you have them? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, in that situation, Monica, I would definitely let your admissions counselor know um, because that's an admissions deadline. That's not a us deadline um, as far as your like sending in your official transcripts are concerned. Um, we're fine, like if for the registration form, you can just submit whatever you have unofficial um, and that should include your in-progress classes for um, spring and that's fine for us, like for evaluation purposes. Um, but that July 1st uh, official transcript deadline is an admissions deadline. So if you fear that there's gonna be some delay um, with getting your official transcripts in by that time, I would bring it up to your admissions counselor so they don't like put an extra hold on your record or anything like that. Cause that's the danger of missing those deadlines is getting those holds that prevent you from doing anything like enrolling in classes. Um, so yeah, I would just, um, you can contact your admissions counselor directly through the applicant portal um, and just let them know that that's a possibility for you. 
Um, okay. And then Jasmine is asking, is it possible to have one-on-one -on -one help with picking classes after we have our transcripts evaluated? Um, so unfortunately, we are not doing one-on-one -on -one appointments with transfer uh, students. Um, we just have too many <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, we may be hosting some drop-in hours with our peer academic advisors um, later in June or early July. Um, so kind of once you get that course recommendation email from, um, from one of our advisors, uh, you may be able to go to like a Zoom drop-in session with our peer advisors um, and they can answer questions that you have about your schedule um, or, or anything else that comes up in your um, advising. And uh, several of our peer advisors were transfer students themselves. So it could be very handy um, to ask some questions also. Um, but yeah, so peer advisors, drop-in sessions, we will send more information out about that to students once we have days and times for when we're gonna be doing that. Okay. Oh, uh, Estella, did you wanna answer that live or did you wanna <laughs> type out the answer? I am typing an answer. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, okay. So Faith is asking, at what point does it make sense to talk to a transfer advisor about a double major within social sciences? So for example, if a student wants to double with sociology and anthro. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth. And like Estella, I was also a sociology major when I was a student at CF. Um, so to answer your question about when you should go about talking to someone about adding another major, um, I would say as early as possible, just so it does give you enough time to kind of prepare between like both your majors, like what classes you would want to take. And if there's certain classes that need to be like um, taken in a specific quarter or like prerequisites for anything. Um, so in the terms of like, if you're considering adding anthro, it'd probably be a good time to um, contact us sometime during the fall quarter about the process of adding that. Um, because for since the fall, you'll probably just be focusing on all your sociology requirements. Then that way, once you talk to us in fall, we can help you prepare to see what you will need to add the major so you can add any of those courses for the winter time. All right. Um... Okay, so Justice is asking, regarding the math requirement, one option is to take the social science or sociology 10 A and B and C. Um, and then the other option is math 2A or 2B if you've already done stat seven. Um, so I guess it's just a question to maybe like go over the math requirement again. Yeah, and I can review that again, just to reiterate what we were talking, because I know it is a little bit confusing. Um, so basically the requirement is one full year completion of math whether you're doing it here at UCI or combining with what you're doing from your previous college. So we found in the past that many students have at least completed a semester of stats or one course in stats previously. And what that means is basically you'd have credit for the stats seven class, which basically means that's part of the math requirement, All right? So in order to complete the remainder, remaining part of the math sequence for school social sciences, you would have the option here at UCI of completing either math 2A and 2B, which is calculus one and calculus two on the course system here at UCI. You could also complete a semester of calculus back at your home community college if you want to or college. Now for sociology majors, that's not typically the, the most preferred route, right? But that is an option you have and you may have already done that, right? So let's say you are interested in taking calculus. I said, I know I've done my semester of stats. I don't really want to do calculus. The second option would be to take a, a sequence in what we call probability and statistics for social sciences, and that's either social science 10A, 10B, 10C, or sociology 10A, 10B, 10C, which you would complete in a sequence. So if you were choosing that option, you would choose that in the fall quarter, this upcoming fall quarter, take 10B in the winter quarter, and then 10C in the spring quarter to complete that sequence. So that really would mean only one additional class if you're thinking about, okay, I've done a semester of stats versus the calculus option. So it depends on really what you're looking for, Maybe you want to take calculus because you're going to be doing a double major and something that requires it. So that could be the case too. But if you're looking for something that's more straightforward and probability and stats related, many of our students do decide to take the 10A, B, and C series as the option for the math requirement. So 
Hopefully that makes it a little bit more sense, but most transfer students do have to take some portion of a math sequence to complete the School of Social Sciences math requirement. And if you do decide to do calculus, there's also a placement exam required here at UCI as well that you have to see, to see where you start out, out at as well. Um, yeah, the important thing with that too is if you wanna do the stat series, even if you've already taken a semester of stats, it doesn't count for anything towards the 10A, B, and C series. Um, so you have to take all three quarters here at UCI. So you only get credit for that stats course that you took at community college if you also are planning to do calculus. Um, if you're gonna continue doing stats here at UCI, you don't actually get any credit for that class towards that requirement. Yeah, and, and the stats course may provide some background for you too that could be of assistance in the 10 series. So I don't think it's a completely wasted course at all if you decide to do the 10 series because you would have some background in it. But the 10 series is a year long sequence which is taught a little bit differently in that sense, so. Okay, um, so one of the students uh, in the audience is asking, is there an estimate for the number of incoming transfer students in social sciences or in the sociology major specifically? Uh, so I don't have specific numbers for sociology right now, um, but yeah, it is about 950 transfer students that are the incoming class for this year amongst all the majors. So um, sociology, smaller portion of that number, um, but yeah, it's large. <laughs> I'm gonna say like 80 to 100. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a good estimate. <laughs> So yeah, so there we go. 80 to 100 sociology major majors out of a class of 950 students. Um, okay, so Francisco is asking, what will be evaluated when looking into the community college transcripts? I guess I'll take that. <laughs> Everything. Um, so basically we look, um, if you have already filled out the um, registration form, then you kind of have an idea of the questions we ask. Like if you're a community college trans um, transfer, do we ask you if you have a Getsy, um, things like that. So what we really are evaluating is the work that you did at other institutions and how they transfer over here. Um, so we don't figure out the units. That's something that the Office of Admissions does. But what we do figure out is, um, we use assist.org, so something you guys all have access to, um, to make sure that certain classes, if you've already taken an equivalent to a certain class, that, that we tell you you have credit for it so that you don't repeat the same classes. So really what we're evaluating is your classes and helping give you basically a progress report. So the degree check is really how far have you, how much have you completed basically before you've transferred here for your major. So... Um, that's the gist of it, but <laughs> I don't know if I need to go into more detail, but yeah. Okay, so uh, next question is from Corey. So she says she's getting her AA for communications and sociology at her CC um, and knows that we don't have a communications major. So unfortunately, we don't really have anything like related to like communications or any like public speaking, but I would probably consider maybe looking into like anything within like the School of Arts or Humanities, um, like related to that aspect, but like specifically classes on like communications, unfortunately, we don't have that. Um, okay, so Faith is asking, she took a stat series at community college, does that cover the math requirement? Um, so no. So, um, or, or yes, depending on how you want to do it. So um, basically, if you took one semester of statistics at community college, um, then if you wanted to use that towards the math requirement, you would have to either take one semester of calculus at your community college, or you would have to take two quarters of calculus here at UCI. And those classes in combination with your statistics class would meet the math requirement. Otherwise you have to do the three quarter statistics series here at UCI and take sociology 10A, 10B and 10C. Um, and that psych 10 class from your community college does not cover any portion of that 10A, 10B and 10C series. Um, so it's really, a question of do you want to take calculus or do you not want to take calculus uh, as far as your math requirement is concerned. 
Um, so then if you do decide you want to take calculus, it would be up to you to decide whether to take it at your community college or to take it here at UCI. Um, and if you did want to take it here at UCI, you would have to take placement exam first. Um, uh, and most students end up having to start off with pre-calculus anyway. So then you're still taking three quarters of math. So at that point, you may want to just take the statistics series um, if you were planning to go that route. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let us know if it doesn't. You need us to explain again. Yeah, and just to add on to that later too, when we talk later about when you get your email from your academic advisor, you're going to get a degree check and it's going to give you the options again for the math requirements. So you'll be able to see that again and see what you already have credit for and what you what your choices are. So then at that point, you can decide which option might be better for you. The one thing that we do usually mention is that try not to wait to take that requirement. So putting it on, I mean, taking it early, right when you know you need to, is better usually than waiting to the last minute because that way it eliminates any potential issues that may come up in the last quarter or things like that. So definitely something good to get out of the way right away. I'm also going to just butt in because I do that um, and just share that like most of the time it is better to take the social science 10 A, B and C probability and statistics sounds somewhat boring. I'm sure, especially if you've already taken a semester of statistics, um, but kind of to add on to what everyone's saying, it really does actually help you with sociology. Um, like when you're taking like the methods course and especially when you end up taking your social 180A course, um, it is really helpful to have that statistics background. So you're able to analyze your data and everything. So um, it does help you where not to say that calculus doesn't help, but I think it's hard. So <laughs> I don't know. I never even attempted calculus or the test. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, if you know you're not a math person, calculus is not the way to go. Um, and that's from years of experience and knowledge. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Math 2A and Math 2B at UCI, the calculus classes are notoriously difficult. Like even people that are good at math have often struggled with those classes. Um, not to like completely scare you off if you're like, yeah, I can't wait to take more calculus, but I kind of feel like mo most students in social sciences or humanities are not super gung-ho about having to take more math classes. Um, so yeah, if you are not a very um, confident in your math abilities, I would say go with the stat series for sure. Um, I think every I think everybody agrees <laughs> about that too. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't see. Oh wait. Hey hey, we have another question. Okay. So this student is asking if I took a research methods class at my community college, could that potentially count for the sociology one ten requirement? Or can classes from community college not be used for upper division requirements at all? Sorry, no, <laughs> it doesn't count, but um, it does give you some background in like research methods, which will help you. Um, but anything to get a community college is lower division, so it can't replace an upper division requirement. Sorry. Okay, so does anybody else have any other questions that you can think of? Now's your chance. Ask away. Uh, probably if we don't get any other questions in the next like minute or so, we'll probably wrap up um, our presentation then. Oh, okay. So Andrew is asking, I've taken one semester of stats and will be completing one semester of calculus this summer. Is it still worthwhile to go through the three course stat sequence when I get to UCI? So if, you're, if you've already completed your one semester of stats and you already have the one semester of calculus this summer, technically that would already, by the end of summer, you would be done with our School of Social Science um, math requirement. So you wouldn't need to um, take any more math classes here. If, I mean, if you really were interested in wanting to take um, statistics, like if this is something that 
you want to do, then um, you are welcome to, but it's not needed. But if you already have that background in stats, I would probably say it's okay for you not to take it here. Okay. So Francisco is asking, what's the fastest that I could complete the required 180 quarter units to graduate? So Francisco, good question. And the quick answer to that is gonna vary by student, right? The reason we say that is because everyone's coming from different colleges and is transferring a different amount of units coming in, which are still being in the process of being evaluated you know, by UCI admissions. So the easier answer is most students that are sociology majors coming into UCI have the opportunity to graduate within two years, which is the typical time frame, which is six academic quarters. Um, that's usually doable with a sociology major. Um, there might be an opportunity to graduate earlier, depending on how many you have coming in and what you're taking during the academic year and summer school in the future and things like that. So there is no kind of direct answer that works for each student individually. So it really depends more on how many units you're coming in with from your previous school and how many units you're taking per quarter here at UCI. And if you want to do a double major or not or a minor or not, that, that factors into the equation as well. Okay, so uh, Faith is asking, is it usually recommended to start the stat series right away? I so, would say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wants to answer, we all had something to say. You want so to go, Stella? You... Okay. Um, so again, I would, you know, I think, if most everyone would agree to that like getting that stat sequence out of the way as soon as possible would be highly recommended. So if you know you're going to go that route for the 10 series, I'd say make that one of your core course choices for the fall quarter, take 10A in the fall, 10B in the winter, and 10C in the spring. That way it's out of the way in that first year. And then going into your second year, that's already out of the way and you can focus on other courses that you might want to take. Okay. All right, any other questions? Nope. All right, so the student is asking if I come to UCI with 105 quarter units, does that mean I will have a better registration date or time than someone who has fewer units? So as Sarah mentioned earlier, kind of like our transfer advising timeline, like it is just um, at least for this coming fall, it's not going to like be based on the number of units you've completed. It's kind of based on like make sure, making sure you complete um, our registration form and having all your transcripts so we can evaluate it. And then between the weeks of June 28th and July 8th is when you'll be like registering for your window. But in terms of like winter quarter, um, the amount of units you do have completed overall, it does play a factor in when your enrollment will be in the future. Um, so typically, if you do have like more units completed, you do have like a higher like standing and you do usually receive like a earlier enrollment window. Okay, so... We have a question from Jasmine who's asking, um, she went to community college, transferred and did a year at a CSU, and now she's finishing up her academic uh, journey at UCI. Um, so what would the cap be for transferred units since she has both community college and CSU units coming in? So answer for that is um, a lot of it is going to depend on when you're transfer evaluated from UCI admissions. Um, there is a, when we see the, the cap 105 quarter units, that is lower division units that are transferred from any school. So if you happen to have taken maybe some CSU courses that are considered upper division at the CSU and they're viewed as upper division here at UCI, there is a chance you might be able to go over that. But typically, most students have just lower division classes. So whether you've gone to a CSU and a community college, the cap is 105 quarter units for any lower division classes, regardless of, of school that you've attended.
Okay, I think we'll probably start wrapping up um, if there aren't any other questions. Um, if you do think of a question uh, after our session today, um, you can always email the transfer admin um, email address and we're happy to answer your questions by email as well. Um, and that's true throughout the summer. So if anything comes up and you think of a question, just let us know. Um, we are going to post the recording of this session um, eventually <laughs> on our website. Um, and so uh, we have a new students page um, on our social sciences undergraduate student affairs website. Um, and we are going to post all of our recorded live sessions that we're doing um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, so if there's anything that you missed or you wanna go back and check, um, you will be able to do that. Um, and then a lot of this information is also covered in your Canvas modules. Um, so for those of you who already submitted the transfer registration form and have access to your Canvas, um, you'll probably be seeing a lot of this information again, and you can act, go back and access your Canvas at any time. Um, if you haven't done your transfer registration form, please, please, please do that as soon as you can so that we can start taking a look at your transcripts. Um, and yeah, as soon as we get um, your registration, we will give you access to Canvas and you can get started on those modules. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's everything. Remember to turn in your official transcripts by July 1. Um, am I missing anything? I think that's everything. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think that's it from us. Um, Thank you for joining us today. It was good to have a very like active Q&A session, which is not always the case um, when we do these kinds of webinars. So definitely makes it more fun for us. And hopefully it was informative for all of you. Um, but yeah, Kurt, did you want to, or did anyone else want to say anything as we wrap up? No, I, I agree totally. Great questions from across the board. Happy that everyone was attentive and uh, hopefully that presentation helped with clarifying some things about your major coming into UCI. Um, I know our, our entire office is really excited about having students on campus here in the fall quarter. So we're going to be happy to see all of you taking classes. And I'm sure you're even more excited to start your journey here at UCI and social sciences. So yeah, so, you know, enjoy your summer, do everything you need to do to get enrolled in classes when you get the emails. And I think that that way, when fall quarter rolls around in September, you're ready to go and everything will you know, be a fun journey for you. So, you know, that's that, that. <laughs> All right. Well, take care, everyone. Have enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy the rest of your summer. And you'll be hearing from us later on. <laughs> Bye.